Hey guys, Mike here from Arnold Tutoring with a present value question. I want to actually solve this two different ways. Once, if you have a calculator in the course you're using or you're going through, and a second time, I want to actually show how the algebra for something like this can be done by hand if you're in a corporate finance class or something like that where you need to show how an annuity or a mortgage is built up. So the first one, again, calculator. If your course allows a calculator and you need to learn how to use the TVM solver, the time value of money, this will be helpful. There's a few inputs for the TVM solver. There are the number of payment periods, usually N. There is the interest level. There's the present value. There's the payment. And there's the future value. What you need is you need four out of the five of these to be able to solve the fifth one. So let's walk through the question here. You can afford $1,200 per month. So right there, that's going to be our payment. $1,200. And we know that's per month for 25 years. So N, the number of payments, will be 25 years times 12 months per year. That equals 300. We've already got two of the five inputs that we can put right into our calculator. Now the interest rates. The key for the interest rates is that we need to enter it at the same frequency for which it's compounded. So the language here is 6% compounded monthly. That means 6% per year compounded monthly. So we're going to divide it by 12. And that really means that it's, it's essentially 0.5% each month. And then that's compounded. So it's actually going to... Um, be greater than 6% over the course of the year because we're splitting that up into half a percent over 12 months, which seems like it should be equal, but because that's going to compound each month instead of just each year, it'll actually end up more than more than 6%. And we have, we have videos discussing the different periods for compound interest. But we want to put this on the same basis as the number of payments, which we've done monthly, and so 0.5% is what you'll enter into your calculator usually you actually enter the percent number so not in the de in decimal form so we wouldn't move it to point zero zero five we literally enter zero point five into our calculator now present value or future value we're going to assume in this mortgage calculation that we're going to end up with zero dollars left on our loan so we're going to pay the whole thing down so our future value will just be zero then we're going to compute or solve depending on what calculator you're using compute our present value and we should get a, a negative number out because that means you're sort of in the hole for the amount of mortgage you take out and then we're paying back with sort of positive payments so as long as the payment value this one is an opposite sign of the present value you're good to go so here I punch these into the calculator and I got negative 186,000 two hundred and forty eight dollars and twenty four cents so this can be the value of the mortgage you can take out given your budgets twelve hundred per month it's a twenty five year mortgage you're paying monthly uh, rates six percent annually compounded monthly so hopefully that was helpful on the calculator front now I want to go and show you the algebra piece okay so for the algebraic piece here I've drawn a timeline with our months and that's going to continue for 300 months as we saw 25 years 12 months each and what we want is we want this present value so basically how much all of these payments that are happening in the future how much are those worth if we add them all up and bring them back to time zero so let's let's think about the pattern here um, there's going to be 1200 paid out here at time one but that's actually a month away from now so we know that today that's actually worth less than that because of the powers of compound interest, right? To figure out what that is, we're going to bring that back one period by dividing by one plus the interest rate. And that interest rate is that, that half percent, right? It's the 6% divided by 12. Now, what happens with the second month's payment? Well, it's also $1,200, but we're going to bring it back again to time zero, so it's got to come back two places in time right two months what's gonna happen at time three that 1200 is still there 
but this is worth even less at time one, at time zero because we're bringing it back three months dividing by one plus i to the three. And again, I'm using i here as the interest rate, so i in this case equals 0 0.005 or 0.5 percent. So let's look at how this is going to continue. And again, we're trying to find the sum of this geometric series. Why is it a geometric series? Well, to see to get from one month to the next to find the actual present value, we just multiply the 1,200 stays, but we're going to multiply by 1 over 1 plus i to get to there. Right? So each initial, each additional month has just the same month's present, the previous month's present value, I should say, multiplied by 1 over 1 plus i. This takes us back to our learning of geometric series, and I've written the formula down here. We know the sum of a, of a geometric series is 1 minus r. r is that common ratio, so in this case r is our 1 over 1 plus i, because that's what you're multiplying from one term to get to the next. 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Great. And this is also multiplied by the initial payment, sort of at time 0. Right? Um, or at, at time one, I should say. So we are going to use this exact same formula, and I'm going to say my very first payment is 1,200 over 1 plus i times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus i to the n, which in this case is 25. I'm sorry, that's 300, because we're doing months. Over 1 minus 1 over 1 plus i. I'm leaving the i in there right now just because it's easier to write than 0 0.005. If we do some algebra and, and multiply top and bottom by 1 plus i, to sort of get rid of fractions within fractions, this will cancel with this. And on the bottom, this is going to cancel with this, and it'll be multiplied to here. So we're going to be left with our 1,200 times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus i to the 300 over i. Because this will end up being 1 plus i will be here, minus 1, which is just i. And this is our annuity formula. So if I was to, this is our annuity formula, assuming we're paying at the end of each month. So it's, it's sort of payment, which I'll say for C. 1 minus 1 over 1 plus I. That's an I. All raised to the N, or the number of payments, over I. That's our general annuity formula. If I fill this in, and everything works out nicely, 1 minus 1 over 1.005 all to the 300 over 0 0.005. Punch that into the calculator. I'll write the final answer up here. And with any luck, we get the same answer as we did using the TVM solver. And there it is. I punched it in. I got 186,248.24. So this is your general annuity formula for the present value of an annuity paid where the payments are made at the end of each time period. It comes from your knowledge of a geometric, uh, sum of a geometric series, and we can actually see how that's derived now. So hopefully this is helpful in, in seeing where that formula comes from, knowing what numbers to plug in, but also tying that back to the calculator, which we'll be able to use in real life. Thanks so much. You can always send us more questions if you have them, info at arnoldtutoring.com.